all of what we've been talking about with virtual memory, the goal there is to create a process. And that's this abstraction that you want to give a program that it owns the whole machine. What are the things that we need to provide a process? OK, good. So we need some, we need some memory that is owned by that process. Everything that we've been trying to do with virtual memory, that's one of the big goals, to be able to isolate memory so we can have pages that only one process can read or write to. What else do we need to make a process? Is that enough just to have our own memory? In terms of the state of a process, right? so part of the state of the process is it's got its own memory space. What else is part of the state of a process? So we still need, a, need to run some code. What do we need to be able to run code? So the program is both the state of memory and picking the right instruction to, to run. So we need a program counter. That's some register in the machine when it's running. But when it's switched out, we better store that so when it switches back, we can restore it. We also have to keep track of the state of the machine that's visible to that execution. So it's got its own stack. That might be part of having its own memory. It's also got its own registers. Those are all the things of the machine state that you need to be able to execute those instructions. The other thing we can do is have a thread. And a thread is not giving you the illusion that you own the whole machine, but it's giving the illusion or the reality, if you have, have multiple cores, of you have your own stream of instructions. You can execute a sequence of instructions at the same time as some other sequence of instructions is executed on the same machine. What do we need to provide a thread? OK, good. Right, we need the first two things. We need both of these. But instead of our own memory, we're sharing the same memory as the process that created that thread. So that's the big difference between a process and a thread, whether you have your own memory space. So what about tasks? In Rust, we can create a task. Is a task a thread or a process? OK, good. So it's, it's like a process in the sense that it has some sense of having its own memory. But it's also like a thread in the sense it doesn't have its own memory space given to it by the operating system or controlled by the operating system. So it's got aspects of both. What we have for a task, it has its own program counter. It has its own stack and register. So it's got its own thread of execution. It's got effectively its own memory. Unlike if you have a thread in a C program, once you have tasks in Rust, you don't have to worry about data being bashed by some other task. You've got restrictions on what memory can be used. So it's got its own memory, and it's got shared immutable memory. It's fine you can share memory as long as no one can modify it. Then you can't tell if it's being shared. You can think of it either way. You can think of it as, well, it's a thread, except for we get rid of the unsafe memory sharing that threads have. Or you can think of it as a process, except for we add a way to share memory that has much lower cost than sharing memory across processes. And there are ways to share memory across processes. What's, what's a, an easy way to share memory between processes? So there's no rule that a page can't be visible to more than one process. So you can have a page that is in the page table visible to more than one process. And they're sharing that memory, and there's no restrictions on it. But that's not safe. And a task in Rust doesn't require any of the costs associated with an operating system process. It doesn't require setting up a separate memory space. Here's some code. This is something you've seen from the tutorial, I think part two of the tutorial, maybe part one. Right, so we're trying to find the callout number, uh, sorry, a number that takes at least k steps to finish reaching one using the callouts rules. This is single-threaded code. It all runs in one task. I want to make this faster. I have an eight-core machine. I'm getting tired waiting to find my coalesce numbers. Can I make this faster? So how can we keep the other cores busy instead of doing everything in one core? This is a fairly non-obvious example of code that you might want to parallelize. Because a lot of code, if, if you've got a data structure, like a list, and you want to do something for each element on that list, and it's independent, well, then it's pretty obvious. You run what you want to do for each element in a separate task. There's still some trickiness how to set that up in Rust to get all the memory sharing the way you need. But something like this is much less obvious how to make it run in parallel to be faster. So at a high level, what, what should our goal be if we want to do this in parallel? We want to keep, 
keep all our cores or as many cores as possible busy doing useful things. So we've got two functions here. Which one do we think we can parallelize? So what, what property do we need of our program to be able to run it usefully in multiple tasks? Good, yeah, so we need some parts of the computation that don't depend on previous parts. Right, so if everything depends on what you did right before it, there's nothing you can do in parallel. You've always got to wait for the previous thing to happen before you can do it. There's not really any opportunity to make this parallel. In order to compute these next steps, we need to know what n is, and we know what n is from the previous step. Right? Unless you have some extraordinary insight into coalesce numbers, you're going to not be able to remove those dependencies. Now, you can make this a lot faster using caching and doing other things, but in terms of you know, this straightforward way of doing it, you've got to basically go through the steps in order. There's no, there's no parts of that that don't depend on previous parts. What about this? Is there a way we can run this code out of order and still, still get what we want? Yes. Good, yeah, so we could try running them in different tasks. It's a little trickier than that because we, we're not going from one to K, right? We're, we don't know how many we have to try because we're, we're going until we find one where this result, and we don't know that result, where that result is greater than or equal to K. So we don't, we don't have a fixed number of tasks to do. We have some unknown number of tasks, but we can do them in parallel. So we've got all these values of N. So we can try finding call-out steps of that. We can try all of these computations in parallel, and then we've still got to figure out which one got the result that was higher than K. But we can keep the cores busy doing ones. We may not end up using all the results. If we found that three came back with a result that was greater than K, then we wasted some energy having cores run on the later ones, because they had to start before we were done with three. But if none of these were good, then that was useful, right? We were able to reject all of those at once. So let's try to see if we can modify the code to do that. So here's my, my first very bad attempt to do so. Um, but at least illustrates how to spawn tasks. I've got a loop, so now I'm spawning each of these calls to call out steps in a separate task, and if I get one that's greater than k, it's going to print the result, and it's going to keep going. What do you think is going to happen when I run this? So what do you think we're going to see when I run this? Is it going to find the number that I'm looking for? So I'm spawning all these processes, all these tasks, so I'm not spawning processes. I should make sure to speak correctly. So I'm spawning all these tasks. I'm going in order through the values of an n. And when I find one that exceeds the value I'm looking for, I print it out. Does anyone happen to know their collapse numbers well enough to answer this? OK, so it's running. And we start seeing results come back. Does this make sense? People are looking very puzzled and unhappy. Well, there's nothing that stops this, right? So I've got an infinite loop. In the loop, I spawn a new task. And what the task does is call call out steps for whatever the current value of n is. Why, why did I need to introduce that extra variable? So if I tried to use n here, that would capture n, meaning this task now would have access to the variable n, which is a mutable value which can't be shared. So what I need to do to use that value here is create a new variable that's not mutable and use that. Right? And then it's fine to share an immutable variable with the task that I'm creating because it's immutable. They can have shared immutable storage. And it keeps going. So this is not so bad. Is it always going to print the um, numbers in order? Is it always going to find the first one first? Right. So there's no guarantee. It, it probably is pretty close to finding them in order, but not exactly. Right. So we see some where it found a, a bigger one before it found a smaller one. Right. And which ones it finds first it really depends on the scheduler. Right, which task is getting its chance to run, and if, if they all got to run to completion before the next one got to run, well, then they come in order. That's not what is happening. So this is getting some benefit. 
if our goal was to print out a bunch of coats, a bunch of numbers that have more than 500 coat steps. It's going to be faster than if we just did all that sequentially. To do something more useful, we're going to have to set up communication. And we have a way to communicate between tasks and the parent that creates them. We can send messages and we can receive messages, and they can be any type. The send call is asynchronous, so that means when you call send, you get to the next instruction right away. Doesn't matter if, if the receiver is ready or not. The receive call waits until it receives something. So I will leave a good challenge for you to write your own multitasking find call lets if you either want a, a watch or a t-shirt or not to take the exam. <laughs>